Yes. Perfect. Okay. So um, again, thank you, Chad, for introducing me. Uh, like he said, I'm Jesse Hadfield. I've also included Jake and Melanie Stock on this presentation because we worked on getting some of the resources put together um, together. And I have some pictures later on that show and we're going to do some handling. And so I've got some of those. So um, I wanted to talk about selection and health inspection since we did such a great overview last year and all of those slides and presentations can be found and the video on YouTube has over 30,000 views. So um, it's pretty easy to find if you just do a search, if, you, if you're looking for some more general information, but we're gonna talk about the selection and then a health inspection for your rabbits. And, but before we do that, just a brief introduction for rabbits. We break rabbits down into three categories, companionship, you know, pets, companion animals, show and hobby, and then food and fiber. And if you're here on this presentation, I'm assuming that you are mostly focused on the food and fiber, but you might be like myself and have kind of a combination of all these three things. Um, a little bit later, after I've done some of the presentation, I'm going to introduce you to two of my rabbits. Um, one is a pet rabbit that lives in the house, and the other one is a meat rabbit. So I'm going to show you some differences there. We're going to go over some handling. Um, so all of the things. We do all the things with rabbits here at our house. So with food and fiber, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, but we all know that there's some nutritional differences with rabbit. There's some economic advantages. And then even though fiber is not a huge market here in Utah, it's kind of nice to have a product that not only provides food for the table, but also has some additional byproducts that we can sell in terms of fur. So the biggest thing with our rabbits is selection. And I, this is the number one question that we get is what rabbits should we get? How do we find a breeder? What do we do? And, and so we're going to just talk a little bit about the selection of your meat rabbits. And when you're thinking about meat rabbits, obviously the difference between a four pound Holland Lop and a 10 pound New Zealand is pretty obvious. If you're looking for a meat rabbit, you're not going to go with the cute fuzzy little Easter rabbit that you see here on the left. You're obviously gonna pick the, the heavier weighted rabbit. Um, but one of the things that we get caught up in is, um, is bigger better. So on the left, we have a checkered giant. This is a rabbit breed through the American Rabbit Breeders Association that has a minimum weight of 12 pounds. They can get up to 16 or 17 pretty frequently. Uh, and then you still have your New Zealand here on the right, which is the most popular rabbit breed uh, for meat rabbits that's only 10 pounds. And so as a new homesteader looking for rabbits, you may be thinking, well, obviously I want the checker giant, bigger means better. Um, but this next slide is gonna show how that may not be true. This image is from Raggedy Bits Rabbitry, John and Janet Ford. And you can see here, these are two rabbits. The one on the bottom is a New Zealand white. The one on top is a checker giant. These rabbits were both six months old. They were both pedigreed, high quality rabbits, both healthy. They were on the same diet. And the checkered giant carcass was almost a full pound lighter. And you can see that not only is it a full pound lighter, but look at the shape and conformation of that carcass. And so obviously this rabbit is mostly bone, despite the fact that he could have been 16 pounds. Um, he probably wasn't at six months, probably closer to 12. Um, did not have the same dressing percentage. And so keep that in mind when you are selecting a meat rabbit, that it's always best to select a rabbit that has been bred as a commercial type for meat. So the American Rabbit Breeder Association has 50 different recognized breeds and there's over 15 of the commercial type. So that's what you're looking for when you're looking for a rabbit breed is that commercial type. Um, the top four are the California, the New Zealand, the Palomino and Satins. And that's across the nation. That's not necessarily Utah specific, but those are the top four most popular breeds um, that get shown in that commercial type that are used in commercial rabbit trees. And then I also want to make mention of silver fox and then mixed breeds because we see that a lot, especially breeds mixed with like Flemish giant or checker giant. So first breed, California, all Californias look this way. This is a Himalayan rabbit. They've got the black points and the red eyes. Um, they're big, fast growing rabbits. You've got your New Zealand. New Zealand's are kind of fun because they're fast growing, they're really meaty, but they come in a lot of different colors. So if you're not necessarily selling a white pelt that's going to be dyed um, and you want some variety, New Zealand's are kind of fun. Palominos are not as popular in Utah, but they're another really popular breed. They all have this yellow coat. They're um, red or orange in color. 
And then my personal favorite, satins. Satins are fun because they've got this unique fur type. They're a little bit smaller. They're still fast growing, but they're medium. They're going to be eight to 10 pounds rather than pushing into that 10 to 12 pound range. But their coat has a translucent shaft on it. And so it gives it this nice sheen. Um, in fact, purebreds, uh, we call people who raise satins are a part of team sheen. That's what we call them. So because of that nice shiny coat. Now, when we're, um, you may have heard of silver fox in Utah. Maybe many of you have silver fox. This is a rapidly growing in popularity here in Utah. And again, they're a larger rabbit breed. They're actually one of the first three breeds that were um, designed, not designed, but um, it created <laughs> um, in Utah. So recognized through the American Rabbit Breeders Association, one of the first three. And so um, and again, another nice meaty breed that you guys may be familiar with, not as popular nationwide, but definitely growing in popularity here. And then if we're looking at mixed breed rabbits, um, a lot of the times on KSL or on Facebook or other places where you may be finding rabbits for sale, we're gonna be seeing mixed breed rabbits and we call them crossbred, Sometimes we just call them meat mutts. It just depends on what you're looking for. And the number one thing that we see when people are getting mixed breed rabbits is that they've heard about hybrid vigor or heterosis. If you don't know what hybrid vigor is or this heterosis, it's a really popular term that we use in a lot of our livestock in, in productions, um, cattle specifically and sheep. And hybrid vigor is the phenomenon in which the F1 offspring outperform their purebred parents. And so a couple things to remember with this, is that F1 means the first generation. So if you have what we would call a meat mutt rabbit, you are not gonna see heterosis. That's gonna be a rabbit that has been, um, is several generations away from those purebred parents. And the F1 offspring will outperform the average of their parents. It doesn't mean that they're gonna outperform both parents significantly. So just as an example, um, and these numbers are arbitrary. They, I'm just using them so you can see how hybrid vigor would work. So if you decide to use this in your production systems, you have a better understanding. Um, let's say that your sire has a growth rate of a one. And again, I just made these numbers up. These don't mean anything. Um, your dame has a growth rate of five. And so for hybrid vigor, the average growth rate of those two parents would be a three. And so if you're thinking about, you know, this crossbreeding, you know, okay, we're going to get a three. But what we're saying is that the offspring growth rate is actually going to be a four for the, if you are going to see that hybrid vigor or that heterosis. And so not as good as the dam is a purebred. Let's say that she's a California and you're breeding her to a satin. You're not going to see the same growth as a purebred California, but you're going to see better growth than what you would normally see with a mix between those two. So that's hybrid vigor. So keep that in mind. Um, if, we see this sometimes on KSL where people are talking about, you know, these meat mutts have hybrid vigor. That's not true. You're not actually going to see that. So um, just keep that in mind. This is a really useful tool in a production system. Um, if used correctly. So in summary, when you're doing rabbits, when you're looking for that breed, there are so many different breeds. So 50 different recognized breeds through Arba, um, 15 of the commercial type. I would recommend just doing some research, finding a breed that you like, and going with that. We also really encourage you to breed responsibly. Make sure that you have a goal to improve your stock, that you're not just breeding for the sake of breeding, even if you are planning on using that end product. Um, breeding responsibly is really important, not only for the health of your rabbit, but also for your production system. So once we have picked a breed of rabbits, and um, if you need help finding a breeder, the American Rabbit Breeders Association is a great place to go. And um, if you're on Facebook, that's a great place to find breeders. Um, but you are probably going to want to do a health inspection of your rabbits before you bring them home. And then periodically, I recommend doing this you can't ever do it too much. If you have time to go out and handle your rabbits every day and do a health inspection, by all means, please do. But um, I usually try and handle each of my rabbits at least once a month and specifically a couple days and then the day before breeding for both our bucks and our does. So I'm going to quickly go through a health inspection. For those of you who are familiar with the American Rabbit Breeders Association or rabbit shows, a health inspection is essentially showmanship. So our youth are going to participate in a showmanship contest. And what they're doing is they're demonstrating their knowledge in conducting a health exam or a thorough inspection of a rabbit. And that's what we're going to do. So essentially, I'm going to teach you guys how to win a showmanship competition. First thing you're going to do is you're going to check the ears. 
We're going to look for the personal identification, which is a tattoo in the left ear. And we're also going to be looking for signs of ear mites or other infections, redness, crustiness, and inflammation in the ear. We're going to check the eyes, mostly just for discharge and redness. But if you have show rabbits, you're also going to look for color. We want to make sure that they fall in line with ARBA standards. Then we're going to look at the general condition or the cover and the finish and the fur of your rabbit. We're going to check the mouth and the nose. We're looking for some discharge and we're going to look for teeth alignment. A lot of times when we see rabbits for sale on um, KSL or, you know, through other avenues to sell rabbits, um, it's the teeth malcollusion is so common. And this is a huge issue. It's highly genetic and hereditary. And um, so we want to make sure that we've got good teeth, that they're aligned correctly, and so that you are not manually clipping teeth back on your breeding stock. Then we're just going to check the underside of our rabbits. We're looking for abnormal lumps. We're looking for teats or nipples, mammary glands. Um, rabbits have eight to 10. So, you know, a good brood doe is going to have 10 teats, and that's going to allow her to nurse the maximum amount of kits effectively. We're going to check the legs and feet. We're looking for some natural width. We want straight legs. We want to make sure there's no sores or abscesses on the feet. We're looking for sore hawks. And then we're going to check the nails. We want to make sure that they have all of their nails, that there's no infection from a nail being torn out or broken. And um, we're going to look for the length and the color of the nails, especially if you're showing. Then we're going to check the sex of the rabbit. And um, we're going to look for a testicular distension on our bucks. We want to make sure that both testicles are distended um, and the same size. We want to make sure that one is not more swollen than the other. And we're going to look for abnormal redness. And then we're also going to look for unusual discharge under the tail. Rabbits can die from fly strike rapidly. It can take a rabbit out in just a couple hours. And so we want to make sure that there's no um, fecal material or anything that might attract flies to the underside of the tail. And then we're just going to take a step back and take one last look of our rabbit for the general health. And that is how you do a health inspection. So I am going to do a handling demonstration and um, just show you it's fine to look at pictures, but when it's all said and done, sometimes it is easier to see, let me stop sharing here for just a second, um, to see in person how you're going to handle these rabbits. So I'm going to turn my camera off for just a second and get set up and show you how to handle some rabbits. And um, if you guys have some questions, you want to go ahead and pop those in the chat and then we'll, we'll go on from there. Okay. And if I stand behind the rabbit, hopefully you guys can see him. Okay. Um, so I actually have both of my rabbits here and I just wanted to show you a little bit. This is a 12 week old satin um, who has not been handled very much. And the reason I picked him is because I'm assuming that most of you who have meat rabbits probably have not been out there cuddling them every day um, like Zoe here. So this is Zoe. She's a, um, a full grown Holland lop. And I just wanted to show you the difference between um, when we're looking at meat rabbits. Obviously, there's a huge size difference, but there's also an age difference. Um, Blue here is 12 weeks old, so he's considered a junior, which is, that's prime. We actually market our rabbits closer to the six to eight week mark. Um, Zoe's full grown, she's four and a half um, years old, and you can just see the difference in the confirmation. I don't know if you can really tell, but you can see how full Blue is around his hindquarters. He has a lot more muscle definition than Zoe does here. Even though she's got a nice full hindquarter for her breed type, um, still a little bit more narrow, just doesn't have that same that same look. So I'm going to set her down here. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly go over this, see how much time we have here. So first thing we're going to do is check for that tattoo. Blue isn't tattooed yet. And so um, that's the first thing we're going to look. And that's why we start with the ears and the head versus anything else. Because if you don't know what rabbit you're looking at, then um, your whole thing is going to be mute. So we're going to check that ear. We're looking for those ear mites again. We're going to check his eyes, looking for redness, any swelling um, or discharge. And then we're actually just going to flip him around this way and check the other side. Okay. Um, again, just checking for any signs of anything abnormal, um, especially Mike. And then we're just going to take a quick look at just his general overall appearance. Um, so he's got really good condition, can't feel his backbone, but can feel 
that, that width and definition over his top line and especially through his hind quarter. And then we wanna check that fur. He has what's called a uh, rollback fur, meaning that when we roll our hands through, and I don't know if you guys can see on the camera, but he's shedding like crazy now. So it looks like it's snowing in here, but that's what we're looking for is just that density of the coat as well um, as just his overall condition. Then we're gonna flip them over. And like I said, he hasn't been handled very well. So we're gonna do, um, I'm not actually holding his ears. I'm just using it as kind of a little bit of a, a grip so that I keep my hand in the right spot. I'm gonna grab his scruff here right in front of his shoulder. And I'm gonna just flip him over this way. Um, this is a pressure point for rabbits. So it's kind of like if you have, if you're doing acupuncture or something like that, it helps relax them. We're gonna lay him flat on his back so that we can check some of these other things. Um, looking at his nose, we want his nose to be dry. We want to check, if you want to check his respiration rate, um, we want his nose to be moving consistently. We don't want him to be breathing really heavily and then slow down and then breathing heavily again. That's a sign that something else is going on. We're going to check his teeth. So I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but I'm just going to reach my hand over the top and just pull those top cheeks back so that I can see. And we want his teeth to be aligned correctly and that they're growing correctly. We're also going to look for some wetness under the chin here and just make sure that he's not um, wet. We want to make sure that he's nice and dry. Okay, we're going to move him over just a little bit. I'm going to check his under his chin. We're looking for lumps. I'm going to check all down his body. If this was a doe, I would check for teats at this point. Make sure that there's no calcium deposits or swelling, anything like that. I'm going to check all four legs to make sure that they're straight. I'm looking for any swelling in the joints, anything like that. So check his front legs and we're going to check his back legs. Now for a meat rabbit, when you're looking for um, selection, we want these back legs to be nice and wide. Um, you can see how much width he has here. That is going to allow him to have the maximum amount of muscle and product. So nice and wide here, really good here. Um, he has nice white big feet, no sign of sore hocks on any of those. Again, we're going to just check these nails and make sure that he has all of his nails on his fronts and on his back. And um, this is obviously a little bit more important for a, you know, a show rabbit. We want to make sure that they have all of them, but we also want to make sure that they're not getting any sort of infection. If they rip a toe off or lose a toenail, um, sometimes you're going to get an infection in those toes and we want to avoid that. So that's what we're looking for. Then we're going to check for um, his tail. His tail's nice and straight. We're also just going to check the sex of the rabbit. I know he's a buck, so um, we're just going to check and make sure that there's no abnormal swelling or redness. Um, he's not quite old enough to be, uh, he could breed, but we haven't bred him yet. So his testicles are not fully distended, but I can see if I check in here, they're both the same size and I actually can see them a little bit better now that he's not outside. It's 10 degrees outside this morning. So they were a little hard to find earlier, but the, we're going to look for that as well, because if there's any sort of, if it's too cold or too hot, then it, that's going to affect your fertility on your box as well. So we're going to check that. We're going to flip him over. Um, again, just check one more overview and then um, just take one more look. So um, a couple things you may have noticed, I should have brought this up when I first started. Um, this is just a carpet pad from a, from a carpet store, just a sample. And I was able to get a stack of them for free. So I would reach out and see if people have, you know, old samples that they're giving away. Um, sometimes there's just like leftover carpet that you can just cut pieces. I love this. It gives them something to sit on and, you know, get, it's a little bit grippy so that they can keep a hold of that. But not going to ruin my table or my carpet or anything like that. I also recommend and if you need to wear gloves, not because the rabbits are going to bite necessarily, but just so that your hands don't get scratched up um, and then wear long sleeves. So that is a general health exam and how you're going to handle your rabbits and um, a little bit about selection. So we've got about eight minutes left. And so if you guys have questions, we can take those questions now. Okay, hey. so um, a couple questions in the Q&A. I'll just go ahead and answer these live. So how do you tell when they are really little if they are a boy or a girl? Um, this is the hardest thing to do. Um, and honestly, I so Blue here, I thought was a doe up until he was six weeks. Um, that's how long it took for him to finally develop enough that I could very um, for sure tell that it was a buck instead of a little doe. 
So the easiest thing to do is to just check frequently and get used to how they look. Um, this is also going to depend on your rabbit breed. So a faster growing rabbit is going to um, differentiate quicker, but the easiest thing to do is to remember that um, your bucks are gonna look like little burritos and your does are gonna look like little tacos. So practice, practice, practice. And obviously the older they are, the easier that is to tell. Um, Heidi asks, what kind of housing do I recommend for meat rabbits? Um, so my rabbits are just outside in a shed. They handle cold much better than they handle heat. So they're out there right now. The biggest problem is just making sure that their water doesn't freeze. We actually bring our water bottles in at night and then it's cold enough out there that they're freezing during the day. So we take warm water out three or four times a day to make sure that they're keeping up with that. Um, but as long as they have shelter, some way to get out of the wind and the cold, as long as they don't get wet, rabbits do very, very well outside in the winter. Um, and so they're just in wire cages in a basically a portable like carport shed type thing. So um, really simple. Rabbits can handle a lot of different really simple setups to really elaborate setups. Um, a good number of rabbits to buy to start meat production. So again, this is from Heidi. I recommend starting with at least a trio. So you want one buck and two does. I recommend getting them from the same breeder so that you um, know that they're compatible with each other in terms of their genetics and their growth and that you have some consistency. And then um, unless you want to like really capitalize on hybrid vigor, then I would get two does from one breed and then your buck from another. And then of course, all of those offspring you're going to sell and you're going to look for outside sources to, to do that. But, um, yeah, starting with three is definitely a good number. Rabbits can be butchered year round. And in terms of curing the meat, you're going to handle the meat just like any other, um, meat product. So you can cure it, you can store it fresh and you can freeze it whatever you need to do to be the most effective for your production system and how you have that set up. Um, rabbits are not necessarily, uh, we call them induced breeders. So they breed better in the spring and in the fall when it's cooler, but that's not necessarily because of their cycle. That's, that has more to do with the weather and the temperature. Um, so rabbits are induced breeders, meaning, or induced ovulators, meaning that they will come into heat or come into season when they are around a buck or when they're around some stimulation. So we breed rabbits year round um, and your big commercial rabbitries are going to breed year round as well. Um, so our processing, so we don't process in our backyard. Um, so Tamara asked, who does your processing and does it need to be USDA inspected for retail at farmer's markets? Um, I would highly recommend looking up the local laws. And my understanding is that it does not need to be USDA inspected as long as it's a direct sale. So as long as you are talking directly to the consumer, you do not have to be USDA inspected. However, if you're going to be selling to a retail market that is then going to be selling again, then it does need to be inspected. We sell all of our meat rabbits to um, a, a buyer. We have a, not necessarily a contract, but um, a buyer that comes and takes our rabbits as often as we can get them to him. So we don't do any of our own processing partially because of where we are. We're in a very suburban area. And so we don't want to shock or um, terrify our neighbors because we have all these cute rabbits in our backyard. But um, yeah, so we just load them on the truck and we send them year round whenever we have them. So great question. Well, Any other questions? Looks like you have one more question coming in. Okay. Um, where can you find rabbit recipes? Honestly, trial and error. And um, Steve, I don't know if you have Pinterest or anything like that, but that is the best place to find a plethora of recipes. Um, just Googling them online. Honestly, my favorite way to eat rabbit is either to just fry it, like grill it like you would chicken. Um, so either fry it or grill it like you would chicken or have it in a stew. So, and depending on the age of your rabbit, the younger the rabbit, the, the more tender the meat is going to be. So I don't have a personal favorite, but those like in terms of a recipe, but that's how I like my rabbit cooked. Um, Heidi asked any tips to make butchering the rabbit the most pleasant. And so this is a hard question because there's so many differing opinions. There's a lot of different ways to dispatch your rabbits. Um, and obviously our goal as a 
producer of someone who's, you know, producing and raising a meat animal is for them to have one unpleasant day, but one bad day. That's what we're looking for. We want that one bad day to be as pleasant as possible. Like Heidi says um, in her question. So my advice, um, personally, how I prefer to butcher rabbits is using either a captive bolt or a, uh, you know, a bullet, like a 22. Um, that to me is the most humane. It's hard to mess that up. Um, some people use what they call the, the hopper, which is basically just, um, a way to dislocate the, the neck, uh, so that the rabbit is completely unconscious and then they can bleed the rabbit out effectively that way. Um, you may have heard of the broomstick method. There's a lot of different ways um, to do it. Commercially, most rabbits are going to use the hopper method because that's um, because it's the quickest and most efficient. And if you're good at it, then that really is a, a really humane way to dispatch your rabbits. Um, but again, for a backyard breeder, a homesteader, someone who maybe isn't as familiar, who isn't dispatching hundreds of rabbits a day, I, I really recommend a captive bolt or a, a bullet, a 22. Great questions. What age are rabbits ready for dispatch? And really, this is going to depend on your breed of rabbit. So our satins, they get to the appropriate weight at about eight to 12 weeks, um, sometimes even earlier on some of our really fast growing genetic lines. Uh, you can dispatch a rabbit at any time and your old rabbits, your six month old rabbits, but your commercial type rabbits that are growing really quickly are ready between six and eight weeks. So I actually recommend weighing your rabbits. That's something that you might consider doing during your health inspection when you're just checking the overall health of your rabbit is also just throw them on a scale, see how much they weigh. We want our rabbits to be less than five pounds. Um, that's, you know, that's your fryer size. And then anything bigger than that is, you know, going to be a little bit harder, tougher meat. So your fast growing rabbits, the earlier they hit five pounds, the better. Um, but that's kind of what you're looking at. It's more of a weight versus an age. So, and if you're trying to make money and be really efficient, you want them to reach that sooner rather than later. 